Leonardo Torres. You might have never heard of him, but every time you turn on a computer or use a radio remote control anything, you have him to thank. He was born in 1852 on the Holy Feast of the Innocent in Cantabria, Spain. His father was a train engineer, and after serving briefly in the Third Carlos War, young Leonardo Torres completed his studies and followed in his father's footsteps. Soon after, he traveled through Europe to see firsthand all the incredible advancements in technology that were taking place in the late 1800s. But Torres would not be content with merely managing trains. Soon enough, his gaze turned to the sky. In 1902, Torres invented a brand new kind of airship, one that solved a fundamental problem of how to suspend the gondola underneath. By using flexible cables inside the balloon, enough rigidity was obtained to suspend the gondola underneath. By 1911, the Astra Torres airship was in demand and would be used extensively on the Western Front as a spy device. This was a great step forward in aeronautics. Torres would also gain renown for inventing the very first suspension steel passenger cable car. It was constructed in 1907 and spanned the entire length of Mount Ulia in northern Spain. For the first time ever, people could be taken up a mountain and then back down again in safety and comfort. But this was just the beginning. Remote control technology has become a staple of the modern age we live in. But where did it come from? Nikola Tesla may have been the first to invent remote control, but what he demonstrated was really just a rudimentary on-off device. It was really Leonardo Torres who expanded the entire concept into an entire language that machines could use to communicate with each other. The Telekino was a massive step forward in remote control technology. From controls on the top, the propeller could be activated or even shifted into reverse. Further controls steered the rudder. The Telekino was so revolutionary, it laid the foundation for all remote control still used today. The remote control language was the very first non-human one, and he used it to maneuver a large boat into a dock from the shore in front of none other than the King of Spain and a large crowd who looked on in disbelief. He planned on using this remote control technology on torpedoes, but unfortunately he ran out of funding. We all love our video games. And we're all fascinated by the field of artificial intelligence. But where did it all begin? Well, since this is a video about Leonardo Torres, you can guess the answer. At the Parisian World Fair in 1914, Torres unveiled his latest invention. El Hadreo, the chess player is what most historians agree was the first computer game. A complicated system of gears and electrical circuits slid magnetized chess pieces across a board in response to a human sliding the peg of the opposing chess piece into a hole to complete the circuit and make a move. Making Torres one of the earliest pioneers in artificial intelligence If you think Bill Gates or Alan Turin are the founders of the modern computer age we live in, guess again. Before there were computers, there were analytical machines. And Leonardo Torres invented a doozy. 
It boasted the very first electronic keyboard interface. A query would be inputted through the keyboard, then processed by the central core, and an answer would be printed back out. Very reminiscent of modern day PCs, but as groundbreaking as his analytical machine was, it still wasn't Taurus's greatest contribution to computing. But this most certainly was. Floating points arithmetic is probably something you never heard of, but it lays at the heart of modern day computing feasibility. It's the reason why John Babbage in the 1800s failed because he didn't have floating points averaging. It was Torres who would prove that all the ridiculously overcomplicated gears, wheels, and cogs of Babbage's contraption could be completely replaced by electronic parts. Around the time Leonardo Torres passed away, an engineer up in Germany used floating point arithmetic to design and build the world's first fully functional computer. His name was Conrad Zuse, and he certainly is a man I will be making a dedicated video to soon.